Shabbat Shalom. There's literally no one here. It's just very odd. But Shabbat Shalom to all of you. I want you to think back to last Pesach, a year ago. And many of you, probably most of you, went to pretty much the same Seder that you always did. Went to the same people's house, ate the same foods, talked to the same folks. Now, for me, distinctly not the case last year, because I remember Pesach began on a Friday night because we brought our baby home from the hospital on Thursday, and he had been born very early Monday morning. We had been home at that point of the Seder less than 24 hours. We had a less than seven days old baby. My husband and I had slept two hours in a go maximum, I would say. Um, we were just trying to figure out how to keep this impossibly small human being alive. And on top of it all, I'd like to point out I was physically recovering from having just been pregnant and having an emergency C-section. So needless to say, we did not have the same Pesach last year as in previous years, and certainly not the same Seder last year. Uh, the food was whatever my parents picked up at the store because they'd come into town. The meal, I left it all to my mother-in-law. My in-laws also came in, so I just kind of said, Leora, go, go forth and do, do good. Uh, at some point, I left our room, and it could have been 3 a.m. and it could have been 3 p.m., because honestly, at that point in sleep deprivation, they look the same. And I remember leaving our room, and the, the plate and the table were all there, and the Seder plate, and had this set stuff on it, you know, and the table looked fine. I don't know. I wasn't involved in this at all. The Seder itself, uh, I remember feeling tired. I remember feeling really, really tired. I was honestly too tired to even care about the Seder on last year. My father-in-law held the baby the entire time because that's the only way the baby would sleep, even though that meant my father-in-law couldn't actually eat at all. Our parents carried us through the Seder last year. Uh, and after the meal, which only comes two-thirds of the way through the Seder, there's like more Seder after the meal. Uh, after the meal, the baby got really fussy, and the whole thing just kind of devolved. Uh, so we just called it. We just ended it. We ended the Seder. We, we were short uh, Hallel, two glasses, Elijah's cup, uh, next year in Jerusalem, all that stuff. We just, you know, and we were a collection of people who, who grew up in observant conservative homes, uh, were the child of Holocaust survivors, or grew up Orthodox in Jerusalem. And we all collectively said, it's good enough. It's good enough. And I'm thinking that this year might be the year of the good enough Seder as well. I have seen a lot of stuff online, lots and lots of stuff about how to do Seder this year, the tips and the tricks and what things should you add in and new things to try. And I think that's partly because a lot of people are doing the Seder who have never had to do it before, right? Because a lot of people go to their grandparents' house and it's just not safe for anybody, but certainly for, for grandparents. So a lot of folks are doing the Seder on their own this year. And partly I think it's because so many of us are going to be using technology for the first time in the Seder. I know I am. I mean, e even me as a rabbi. Uh, as a shameless plug, second night family Seder. Join me at my table. I can't promise you how neat and organized it's going to be, but it is going to be family friendly. It's a Seder for families with children on the second night. And for people of all ages, Rabbi Morgan Seder is available on Zoom and probably much more orderly than mine will be. Little plug. Partly the reason I think there's so much stuff online about what to add into your Seder and how to do it this year and tips and tricks and uh, I think it's because we want this Seder to be special in a good way. And I think it's because we want this year to feel normal because we want to feel normal. This year is not normal though. And I wish it was God, I wish it was. I do. But it's not. And even if nothing functionally changes for you, Seder-wise, this year, even if you always do the Seder in your home, even if you'll do it with the folks who live in your house, so for you, the Seder looks the same. Nothing changed. But the world still changed out there. And, and it is changing. It's changing right now. And you can feel the volatility in the air. So what do we do with our Seder 
this year. I am a big believer that when you see something brilliant, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. And I saw this online, and it spoke to me in a very deep way. And instead of trying to say it myself, but with different words, I'm simply going to quote it. And it's writer, which is a rabbi, Rabbi Susan Fendrick, she said this, and it is brilliant, I think, and I want to share it with you. And to understand this, however, you need to know one word of Yiddish. It's a very important word, uh, and it is the word shvach. It's a very important word in Yiddish. And Yiddish is such an expressive language. It says there's words in Yiddish that you just don't have in English. Shvach means kind of pathetic. To use an example, hey, how are you dressed for the meeting on Zoom? Oh, I had like a nice top on, but I was also wearing pajama pants, so like kind of schwach. Schwach, kind of pathetic. Good word to know. This is Rabbi Susan Fendrick's words called, You are allowed to have a schwach seder. You do not need to set up a multimedia, multi-layered presentation on Zoom. You do not need to cook 17 dishes that remind you of all the family members that are not gathering with you. You do not need to do all the cool things that people are suggesting for small satyrs. You do not need to go out on your porch at 11 p.m. and sing Chad Gad Yah with the neighbors. You do not need to compile an in these times themed Haggadah or Seder supplement. You are living through an international pandemic. For all the support you have, for all the jokes people are making, for all the new Torah that is being learned, you are experiencing a collective trauma as an individual. Within the delimited space of your own home and your own life, you may be managing others' experience of that trauma. You are dealing with challenges you have never faced before. You may feel scared, angry, depressed, or lost. If you want to, and can do any of the above for a maximalist Seder night, that's great. But if you don't want to, and or you can't, it's fine to cook a modest meal, throw together a Seder plate at the last minute, get up to make salt water when it's time for a karpas because you forgot to do it before, make decisions on the fly about how much to talk, about each step of the Seder and what to read and what not to read. Light the candles, bless the wine slash grape juice and the holiday, eat the symbols, be together, talk about some things, read some things, be energized or be tired. Do things you never did before because what an opportunity to have an intimate Seder or do the minimum and go to sleep knowing that you have fulfilled your obligation. You do not need to make up for the Seder you are not having or the Seder you wish you could have. Do this year's Seders however works for you this year. Do your best to keep yourself and your family safe and healthy. Connect the themes of Passover, getting out of narrow places, celebrating life, gratitude, remembering our obligations to each other and to all others. Dayenu. That is more than enough. Now, those are the words of Rabbi Susan Fendrick, and I couldn't say it better than her, so I thought I would just share that with you. I think that's why this year is the year of the good enough Seder. If you want to and you have the ability to incorporate new stuff and cook a million new dishes and pull out all the stops, call it a vote. Good for you. That's really, that's great. That's awesome. I'm glad for you, really. And if you can't, if you can't do an amazing new Seder or do the same Seder you always do, you can't do it physically or mentally or financially, or you don't want to, <laughs> frankly, have a Seder that's good enough. Do the minimum requirements and be kind to yourself. Be gentle with yourself because these are extraordinary times. We cannot judge ourselves based on the previous year's situations and we don't need the added burden of holding ourselves to impossibly high standards. Do not expect to have the perfect Pesach. Don't expect to have the perfect Seder. And don't expect to be the perfect parent or the perfect friend or the perfect worker. 
We are all doing our best by doing good enough. And as Rabbi Fendrick says, Dayenu, that is more than enough. Shabbat Shalom and Chag Sameach.